To remove the stator, I first need to remove the primary cover. So that's the primary case cover off and you'll see now we can see the uh, rotor and the stator and the wire that goes from behind the stator through the engine casing there's sort of like a looks like a, a brass uh, fitting there through the casing and it comes out up here so um, what I'm probably going to do is uh, tie something to the end of that wire and then pull it back once I've removed the stator, pull it back through the cases um, so that I've sort of got a, like a tracer wire to pull it back when I refit it after I've done the soldering. I'm not sure if this is the right setup, but these nuts are slightly different. So these are a quarter Whitworth, these two here, and this is a 3 16 Whitworth nut. I really didn't want to have to take this apart again, but it's just one of those things. as straight as I can. There we go. Come on. Yeah, I think the cable is holding it a little. This cable is good here. A couple of no, no, it's it's good. But um, before I start pulling it through, I'm going to tie something at the other end, and then make sure it's kind of nicely lined up to draw out through this hole. Yeah. So here on the other side, uh, where the wires have broken, uh, you'll see that the wire just disappears under the chain case, or the, the casing here, and so. I'm not sure how confident I am um, in just pulling that wire through without having something that's attached to it, you know, when I actually have to feed it back through there. Uh, so I'll just attach another piece of wire to it and then I can pull it through. Well, we'll see if that works. Uh, it might be a little too wide to go through the hole, but I'll try. Oh my gosh. That's tight. Oh, I don't like that at all. Ugh. I'll try a little bit of this. No, I don't like that at all. Oh, bollocks, that's so tight. I suspect this, and it's actually chaffing as well on that hole. Oh, crap. Mm. 
So that wasn't quite as easy as I thought it would be. I thought I would be able to get hold of this stata, you know, maybe carefully watching for the connections at the back, grab the wire and pull ever so carefully while, you know, massaging the wire and pull it through the case and it would come out and then I could take the stator onto the bench and solder it. It's grabbing and scratching and digging in as I try and pull it and I've jiggled it around, spent quite a bit of time doing that. Um, and it looks like it's gonna be a pain, a royal pain, trying to pull that all the way through. And not just that, putting it back as well. So I threaded some wire the other way and it went in all kinds of different directions. So um, what I think I'm going to try and do is I've pushed the stator up into the cavity of the case as far as it will go to allow more uh, wire to be available here at the top. So what I think I'd like to do is try and solder the wires on the bike. I didn't want to have to do that, you know, I'll have to sort of set up something that hopefully will work, you know, just cutting back this wire may be a problem. I'll give that a try. I mean, the, the, the benefit is that, you know, I don't have to try pull this wire off and pull the stator off, but um, the disadvantage is I'm gonna to have to try and do it here while it's on the bike. So uh, I'll try that and if that fails then it's going to be a little bit more brute force to pull that wire through and then I'm going to have to deal with that in terms of getting it back once I've, I've had the stator off the bike. So uh, here goes. I'm also conscious that I can cut the wires as well. I want to leave as much wire as I can, you know, the original wire and um, don't want to have any join wires down here if possible but if it comes to that I might just give it a good ride pull it out as far as I can chop the wires um, I don't want any connections inside the cavity in the case you know I want them out here or possibly in here but nothing in between where there could be a breakage that would be difficult to uh, detect So I've made up these two little jumper cables that will connect to the stator spade connectors that I just installed 
and then also at the other end these are the uh, original Lucas bullet connectors that will connect back into the wiring loom and um, with these spade connectors I crimped them and also soldered them and then here with the Lucas connectors um, I soldered those and just had a little shrink wrap in here forgot to do it on that side but never mind it should be fine so I guess it's time to put everything back together again and uh, refit all the cables and reinstall the carburetor and we'll see if we can get this thing to run. So I've taken the the spring off and the needle and I just checked the position. It was on position number one. Um, what I've done is I've taken the piston out and give it a polish with some alloy polish and I haven't got it too hot so it isn't distorted. It's a little bit of a snug fit putting back into the chamber of the carburetor but um, it soon passes. Once it gets past the notch uh, it's pretty uh, free and clear. So I'm going to start by installing uh, the spring and the needle. So uh, taking the needle and the little retaining clip here it's on position one which is the top notch on the needle. It kind of just clicks in. It spins around and it holds it and what we're going to do is put the uh, spring up through the throttle cable, try and compress it uh, without springing everything all over the garage and then um, attaching it to the uh, the piston and then uh, installing the needle and then we'll try and refit the, the carburetor so we'll start by compressing the spring it's sort of a sequence of events so take the cap and the spring that goes th around the throttle cable Oop, okay. came out there What we want to do is compress that spring and I hope you can see this. We essentially want to grab the throttle cable and there's little clamp devices that you can get for this, little tools, but um, if you can just clamp it up with your finger and your thumb, sort of concertina it all up there. It's a little tricky, kind of got to go for it. And the idea is we want as much slack in that cable as we can get it, so sort of like that hold on to that for a minute grab the piston uh, put the cable through the largest hole well it'll only go through one in the base of the piston and then you'll see there it's there's two notches move it across so that it locks in into the other one it's just dropped out again and my thumb's killing ow 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 that's why they have the little tool, right? So, try again. Push that cable through the larger of the two holes, because it'll only go through one anyway. Oh, come on. I can't see, I need my glasses. Okay, push it through, slide it across, pull it, back and it sort of holds and then just kind of let the spring go for a second just to get a rest and then what you want to do is grab the needle and it needs to go in the other in the other hole and that C section of the uh, of the clamp thing that goes around it kind of wraps it around the cable the throttle cable and then ever so carefully let the spring go into the chamber and what it'll do it'll lock around that 
that C clamp type thing that's holding onto the needle. And so now that's your uh, throttle piston assembly attached. Next I'm going to uh, fit the, th the choke slide just into here and what I've done is I've just at the handlebars I've tightened it up to allow as much slack so that it fits that profile there and then once it it sort of slides into there just loosen it off at the handlebars and that will allow the slide to go further down and we won't have as much to deal with when we put this cap and this assembly back into the carburetor. All right, we're making progress and now we're gonna reinstall the cap into the carburetor. So just sort of offer the carburetor up to the the cap and the piston assembly. You, you're looking for this notch here, there in the piston and that corresponds to a little cutaway here, a little notch here in the body of the carb. Um, and that ensures that it's uh, in the right position. Actually, I think it's the only position it can work in. So you kind of just drop the, um, the needle down uh, and then kind of get ready for the notch to engage. Just look through the carburetor and you'll see that the needle should be centered over the main jet. And so make sure that that doesn't kind of skew off to one side because you can damage it. But I'm looking for the, the cutaway, the notch, lining that all up. And then there's a few things that are kind of working against me here, but push it down. and for some reason it oh that it just caught there there we go and so that's that's it fitted there and you'll see it's sliding up and down very nicely so now we're ready to just fit the cap screws i'll just do that pretty lightly to begin with If I can find the thread. There's one. I'm sorry if my hand's in the way. A little tricky angle. I'm just using a little shorty Phillips screwdriver here. And I'll tighten it up th thoroughly afterwards as well. Just want to get it assembled so I can test the uh, the choke and the throttle action while it's off. Okay, I've nipped that. Nip these down. <coughs> that's some tight now. Okay, so uh, that's the that's the carburetor reassembled, and what I did was. Yeah, the cables are a little tight, but... I think that about wraps it up. Hopefully my next video uh, will be to try and start the bike again outside, but it's peeing down again, uh, so uh, it might be in the next few days. I also want to get started again on the Atlas project. So I've got a few new goodies, and uh, this is a steering dampener knob. Uh, it's just for aesthetics for the Atlas for Shep got some shock absorbers that are hopefully the right size this time and a nice headlight and a couple of other goodies so I'm looking forward to a video of those reinstalling those all right see you guys